Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. The following is a reading of a statement that I made on Twitter just a little while ago regarding the G2A and Gearbox situation. This means you don't have to take the time to read it if you don't want to, because everybody knows that reading is for people with far too much time on their hands, which is why you should go to audible.com slash cynical and pick up your free audiobook. Okay, the shilling should end now. All right, reading, begin, yes. Okay, folks, here's where we are. After reading about the G2A and Gearbox partnership to produce a collector's edition of Bulletstorm Full Clip, I made the decision to stop covering Gearbox games. The reason was fairly simple. G2A is a company that profits directly from stolen goods. G2A's existence is an easy place to sell keys acquired en masse through credit card fraud thanks to their lax checks and lack of corporate responsibility has done damage to indie devs, publishers and retailers who are often hit with large numbers of credit card chargebacks. G2A actively profits from these sales in many ways, which include the practice of selling a form of insurance against stolen goods listed on their own website. An insurance that happens to be also incredibly difficult to unsubscribe from due to underhanded tactics from the company. These issues and far more besides are detailed in the list of links that I put at the bottom of this statement. The practice has gone on for a number of years, and it's only got worse as a result of G2A's rise in popularity. Companies such as TinyBuild have publicly stated that they have lost large sums of money this way. A lesser-known incident with Unknown Worlds and Natural Selection 2 almost bankrupted the company. Small startup digital retailers such as Indie Game Stand had to shut down under the burden of credit card chargebacks. It is a serious issue, and it's not one that I take lightly. I felt that it was important to draw a line and take a stand on the issue, sending a message to publishers and developers that working with G2A is a mistake. The morning after I posted this on social media, I was contacted by Gearbox, who asked me to provide proof of what I was saying regarding G2A. They were concerned since they had received significant blowback on social media and wanted to know if I could back up my claims. Well, I've been collating statements, videos, and articles on G2A's various bad practices for years now, so this wasn't exactly difficult. I provided them with a wide variety of sources that detail G2A's various shady activities. For your convenience, I've posted a list of some of those sources below so that you can read them for yourself and use them in future discussions regarding the platform. I'd particularly recommend Level Cap's video on the subject, it's very informative. G2A profits from the ignorance or apathy of gamers to their practices. The best way to hold them to account and ensure that they either change their ways or disappear is to ensure that people know exactly how they operate. Some of that ignorance evidently extended to Gearbox, who were not aware of several of these practices. After I sent them an email with a list of evidence along with statements I'd been gathering from developers, they asked for a conference call. During this call, I walked them through the evidence and explained some of the more complex concepts. I felt it necessary to ensure that I was not simply one person holding a grudge or, worst case, actively trying to sabotage a company for malicious reasons, which is why I provided such a wide variety of sources, so Gearbox didn't have to just take my word for it. They had a mountain of independent sources verifying everything that I was saying. Once they understood the various complexities of the issue, Gearbox proposed a solution. That solution? Well, you can find it in their statement which they gave to the press today. For your convenience, I'll read the whole thing unabridged. Gearbox Publishing heard loud and clear the concerns voiced by John Total Biscuit Bane. Gearbox was then provided with a lot of documentation on the subject, after which John was gracious enough to spend time across the last two days with our head of publishing, Steve Gibson, to put together a proposal and a deadline for G2A to act upon. The following list of conditions must be publicly committed to prior to Bulletstorm Steam launch. Within 30 days, G2A Shield, aka Customer Fraud Protection, will be made free instead of a separate paid subscription service within terms offered by other major marketplaces. All customers who spend money deserve fraud protection from a storefront. To that end, all existing G2A Shield customers are notified by April 14th that fraud protection services are now free and they will no longer be charged for this. Within 90 days, G2A will open up a web service or API to certify developers and publishers to search for and flag for immediate removal keys that are fraudulent. This access will be free of charge and will not require payment by the content holders. Within 60 days, implement throttling for non-certified developers and publishers at the title, user ID, and account payable levels for a fraud flagging process. This is to protect content providers from having large quantities of stolen goods flipped on G2A before they can be flagged for removal. 
The final condition is that G2A must, within 30 days, restructure its payment system so that customers who wish to buy and sell legitimate keys are given a clear, simple fee structure that is easy to understand and contains no hidden or obfuscated charges. G2A are asked to join the ranks of other major marketplaces in this regard. Gearbox Publishing won't support a marketplace that is unwilling to make these commitments and execute on them. There ends the statement from Gearbox Publishing. So these are the conditions that Gearbox has imposed upon G2A, which they must act upon within the announced time frame, or the partnership will be cancelled. The contract that was signed with the company gives Gearbox the right to back out from the deal. I consulted with Gearbox on these conditions to come up with some changes that would address many of the concerns that people rightfully have with G2A's business practices. If these changes were made, it would vastly reduce G2A's ability to profit from fraudulent keys, give developers more ways to intercept those keys before they're sold, and tear down some of the exploitative practices towards their customers. Now perhaps you're thinking that I'm naive, and how could I possibly believe that G2A will follow up on these demands? Well, the answer is pretty simple. I fully expect them not to. I would in fact be extremely surprised if they comply with these demands. There's a small contingent of people who believe that G2A are actually trying to become legitimate and that we should give them the opportunity to do so. I have no faith that they will, but why not give them the chance? If they comply, G2A will have demonstrated that they are acting in good faith and truly want to clean up their act. This will result in a reduction of damage done to independent developers, publishers, and retailers, as well as the exploitation of their customer base through programs like G2A Shield. That's a win. If they don't comply, then G2A will have demonstrated that they've got no intention of acting in good faith, and their token efforts to appear legitimate are the smokescreen that I believe them to be. This will send a message loud and clear to publishers, developers, and customers alike. Do not do business with this company. They're not legitimate. Gearbox will cancel their partnership with G2A, which should send a message to other publishers that this is not a company that you want to work with, and it would also remove the need for a coverage boycott of Gearbox titles. This is also a win. Either way, in my opinion, it is a win. G2A either cleans up its act or it loses its first major AAA publishing partnership in a very public fashion, fully revealing that they have no desire at all to change their ways. Make no mistake about it, I truly believe that G2A has been creating an effective protection racket. By increasing its market share off the back of ill-gotten profits that are then spent on high-dollar sponsorships of streamers, YouTubers, and esports teams and tournaments, they have put themselves into a position where they can try and strong-arm publishers and developers into working with them with the promise that they will prevent this costly fraud if they do so. We've already seen this happen with the G2A pay system. It's been offered as a solution to the problem that G2A helped to create. A problem that they've profited from, and a solution which they also profit from. It's important that a loud and clear message is sent to developers and publishers. Do not give in to these tactics. By giving G2A legitimacy, by associating your brand with theirs, you're giving them power to further exploit and damage the industry. I'm satisfied with the outcome. However, I expect Gearbox to keep their word. If these conditions are not met, Gearbox must cease to do business with G2A and ensure that everybody knows it. At this point, I don't think it's excusable to be ignorant of G2A's practices. This is only the latest in a long line of scandals for the company, and if developers and publishers continue to make deals with the devil rather than resist the advances of G2A, they can expect similar backlash from consumers. I honestly didn't really expect anything to come from this beyond merely taking a personal stand on the subject and then moving on. I'm under no illusions, I'm very aware that I'm just one fish in a very large ocean. However, it ended up turning into an opportunity to try and make the industry just a little bit better, and isn't that my job? If I can make a positive difference in the industry, that in turn makes things better for consumers, and that's my number one priority always. I'm not a fan of apathy or the people that preach it, I'm not a fan of being told that I can't change anything, and I don't like it when that philosophy of doing nothing is spread to others. You all have the power to affect change, especially in large groups, and even if that weren't true, it's still not a good reason to avoid taking a stand on things that you believe in from time to time. A silent majority isn't truly a majority at all, for what use is a majority without the ability to use that majority to affect positive change? If you stay silent, you give others the power to represent you, and you might not like the way that they choose to do it. Thank you for listening. 
please find below the links promised. There are plenty more articles and videos on this subject, so if you do happen to find a good one that I haven't listed tackling an issue that I may not know about, then feel free to send it to me via social media. I'd like to get back to work now. This behind the scenes stuff isn't my style, and I'd rather be making things to inform you lot and put the light on games worth looking at. People keep asking me to script my videos. Well, this is what it sounds like when I do. I think you can understand why I don't. Sound like a goddamn robot. Anyway, I'd rather this consultation role not become a trend, but when presented with an opportunity to make a difference, it's irresponsible not to take it. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.